In the fall of 1943, the United States was fully engaged in a global war on two fronts, Western Europe and the Pacific Theater. On October 11th, a significant event happened during a short battle in the skies over New Guinea. A daring pilot with recruiting poster looks named Neil Ernest Kirby shot down six Japanese fighters in a single engagement and remains to this day one of the nation's all-time leading aces in battle. For his conspicuous gallantry above and beyond the call of duty, Colonel Kirby was awarded the Medal of Honor. Neil Kirby was born in Wichita Falls, Texas to Dr. and Mrs. J.G. Kirby, Jr. Shown here with his mother Bessie and older brother John Gallatin, Neil grew up in Mineral Wells, Texas. Following a family move to Arlington, Texas, Neil graduated from high school in 1928. As a member of the Cadet Corps, he attended the North Texas Agricultural College, which became the University of Texas at Arlington. In 1937, he received a business degree from the University of Texas in Austin. Permanently honored on the UTA campus for his heroism during the war, Kirby's name is now carried forward by a grandson who lives in Florida. Well, he was a very well-respected uh, uh, pilot and leader of men. And uh, he was one of the uh, early um, adopters of the P-47 Thunderbolt. Kirby, in fact, unofficially rewrote the tactics of the P-47. As leader of the 348th Fighter Group, he recognized early on that the plane's huge engine, eight 50 caliber machine guns, and tremendous weight made its maneuverability at low altitudes almost non-existent. But those same attributes allowed the plane to operate high above the enemy, more than 30,000 feet then dive in on them at blistering speed, virtually unseen or heard until it was too late. The exploits of the 348th Fighter Group were detailed in John Stanaway's 1997 book, Kirby's Thunderbolts. That dramatic aerial engagement in October of 1943 occurred as the clouds parted and Kirby, leading a formation of four P-47s, shot down one Japanese plane, then spotted far below 12 Japanese bombers escorted by no less than 36 fighters. Kirby and his men were outnumbered 12 to 1. My grandfather uh, gave the signal to attack. They went into their dive, and uh, I think he tore through uh, uh, three of them pretty quickly. Two more kills by Kirby followed in the ensuing battle. A seventh kill was witnessed, but since Kirby's gun camera ran out of film, it was not counted. Kirby's importance as a leader and a symbol had increased dramatically with numerous awards he received in addition to the Medal of Honor. His actions in combat had made him a national hero. Chronicled in leading newspapers, magazines, and newsreels of the time, he was also revered by his superior officers, one of whom called him the personification of the perfect combat leader. Actor John Wayne, filming in the Pacific, took time to pose with a smiling Neil Kirby. Lieutenant General George Kinney, mindful of Kirby's newly earned status, asked him to spend more time on the ground. But Kirby wanted to be in the air. He was ambitious, undaunted, and fearless. He wanted to, um, he wanted to become the leading ace fighter, fighter pilot in, in history, and his goal was to shoot down uh, 50 planes. On March 5, 1944, not quite five months after earning the Medal of Honor for six kills in one mission, Kirby took off on yet another sortie, with a total of 21 kills to his credit. In the skies over Weewok, he quickly shot down his 22nd enemy aircraft and went after one more. But Kirby's luck had run out. Attacked from behind by a Japanese fighter, Kirby was shot out of the sky and crashed into the jungle below. He was just 32 years old. Neil Kirby was married and the father of three young sons when he died. All three were too young to remember their father and his heroics as they grew up. By anyone's standards, the Kirby couple made a dashing pair, and he had named his plane Fiery Ginger 
in honor of his wife, Virginia. An exact replica of his plane and an impressive display of his extraordinary achievements resides in a permanent setting at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. The actual tale of Kirby's plane, found years after he was shot down, is also showcased. One of the eight onboard 50 caliber machine guns was recovered from the crash site and is displayed as well. Other public acknowledgments of Colonel Kirby's valor can be found at the Medal of Honor Museum in Charleston Harbor, South Carolina. In two locations at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs and at the Pentagon in Washington. In 1959, the U.S. Air Force honored his memory with the dedication of Neil Kirby Hall, at the time a missile training facility at Shepard Air Force Base. At City Hall in his adopted home of Arlington, Texas, there is a display honoring this highly decorated officer and of great significance is a Texas State historical marker and statue in the city center, which commemorates the outstanding sacrifices Colonel Kirby made on behalf of a grateful nation. Local government and private individuals raised funds to erect the tribute. Corey Kirby, married and the father of three daughters, has become the archivist for the Kirby family. While searching accumulated records, he uncovered an account of his grandfather's Medal of Honor action with an original signature at the bottom, that of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Colonel Kirby's brother, Major John Gallatin Kirby, died in a plane crash just weeks before Neal's previously unprecedented battle over New Guinea. Sadly ironic is the fact that all three of Neal Kirby's sons died in aviation accidents while still young men. Almost five years after he was shot down, Neil Kirby's remains were located in the New Guinea jungle. Both John and Neil are interred at Hillcrest Memorial Cemetery in Dallas, buried near their parents, Dr. and Mrs. John Gallatin Kirby, Jr. The heroism of Neil Kirby added further distinction to a rich history for the family name in Texas politics. Going back to the late 19th century, Colonel Kirby's great-grandfather, grandfather, and great-uncle each were active and widely known public servants in the state. And his grandson, a willing guardian of the Kirby family history, is among many to recognize that Neil Kirby was once a Texas boy who became a hero and an icon when a nation weary of war needed him most. He was probably um too daring for his own good, but he truly was uh, an American hero.